Let's take a look at our explainer tonight. And like we said, it's um, all about a fruit that we love so much in this country. We're talking about avocados. Now, before we talk about um, the deal to China and how you can be a part of it, we love avocados so much in this country, but it's important for us to actually understand why. Kenya is actually the sixth largest producer of avocado in the world and the second largest in Africa after South Africa. So we are doing some pretty big stuff with this. So here is what it nets us domestically. It has a contribution to the domestic market of about 5.4 billion shillings and locally it is the fourth most important fruit after mangoes, pineapples um, so uh, and bananas. So you can see just how important it is domestically. Now this number of contribution, this amount was according to uh, results in 2017. Now just where is it grown? It's grown in a number of counties. We have Moranga, we have Kiambu, we have Kisi, Nyamira, Meru, Embu, Kirinyaga, Bungoma, Machakos, Nyeri, and Bomet. These are all the counties in which, excuse me, um, avocados are grown. But we grow basically three varieties in this country. Has, Fuerte, and the local varieties. It is important to note that it is the Haas variety that China is specifically interested in importing. But when you take a look at just what it means on the international market, this is how much Kenya earned exports from avocado for the year 2018. 10.8 billion shillings. Now, our main market is in the EU. There's a number of countries uh, that we export to within the EU and some of those countries um, include um, France, Germany, the Netherlands and the UK as well. And in the Middle East, we have Qatar and Saudi Arabia, as well as, by the way, the United Arab Emirates. So we, like I said, will be exporting the Haas variety to China. Now, uh, the PS in the Ministry of Agriculture, Professor Hamadi Boga, tells me that we will actually be exporting peeled, frozen avocados. So it'll be important for the farmers to ensure that they are handled and packed in the most hygienic conditions that will pass inspection by both our local regulatory bodies, that's the Kenya uh, Plant uh, Health Inspectorate Service, as well as Chinese authorities. Now, what is the market like in China that we are taking a look at? Well, it's quite big. We're expecting to export about 40% of our avocado to China. Now, how many people consume avocados or just what is their consumption like in China? I spoke to the CEO of the Export Promotion Council and he tells me that Chinese consume a lot of avocados. On average, a Chinese family consumes about three avocados a day. Considering the population of China is slightly over a billion people, you can see that that is quite a large market and so that is why this is an interesting deal and this could make us actually the biggest exporters um, and so far the only exporters with this deal so far to China. So what happens next is the big question that we ask. When do we start to see exports and how will the exports be done uh, for farmers? So let's begin with the existing avocado growers. Well, for them, they're already working with companies that are familiar with the export uh, to China processes. These are Sunripe, EPZ in Naivasha, and Kit that is here in Nairobi. Now, supplies will be made to the companies who will prepare and do the packaging and then export to China buyers who have already been identified through the previous promotion activities that were conducted by the EPC and other organizations, including uh, the Agriculture Ministry in China. But here is one interesting thing. It's called the Shanghai Green chain. Now this is a company that has already set up its first office in Africa here in Nairobi to work on building quantities. 
Now, there's also an ongoing horticultural expo to find new buyers and linkages in the Chinese market, including uh, this one that is taking place all the way up until October. Now, this is information that was provided to us by the Export Promotion Council. So that is what is already happening, and farmers are being sensitized on just what those phytosanitary conditions are required by China. But because this may end up being a craze like quail and everybody wanting to get into it what of new avocado growers so you're thinking okay this is a much bigger market than we've already been exporting to so what happens where do you get your information well first off there's a lot of awareness building and capacity creation for farmers again being done by kefis all right, and smallholder farmers are being encouraged now to come together into cooperatives because it makes it easier to export things on a larger scale. Cooperatives, in fact, under the county government guarantee scheme, will sign what are known as buyer seller contracts, both locally and internationally through accredited import and export companies. Now, all of this is obviously being um, coordinated by KEFIS, which is the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Services. So if you are a farmer seeking to go into this, you can go to KEFIS. They will guide you on the standards that China is looking for, including the use of pesticides, including uh, the phytosanitary conditions that we have talked about. Um, but just in case you're thinking this is something you can do now, well, not quite. Of those varieties, well, depending, has for it or the local variety, take between three to four years to mature before they begin producing the fruit. So it's going to take a while. And the yield per acre, I'm told, is anywhere between 300 and 400 kilos per tree if you have 150 trees per acre. So there's a lot of work that is uh, already taking place uh, in there to make sure that farmers are then able to export to China. But all of this may have been lost in the bright, shiny lights of the SGR, the expressway. But this is basically all the details that you need to know about why this deal could be very beneficial to existing avocado farmers and those who might be interested in getting that done. That's our explainer tonight.